Hi, my name's Ashley Ader. I'm going to be your nurse practitioner today. What's your name? Hi, Miss Ashley. My name is Brad. Hi, Brad. What brought you in today? Um, I have asthma, and I've been trying out for my, uh, my school sports teams recently, and um, my symptoms are getting worse and worse, and I've... Uh, I want to play sports, so I was just seeing if I could come get any uh, any help or advice on what to do. Okay. How old are you, Brad? Um, I am 12. 12? Wow, so you're starting to get really in the thick of the sports, and it's the intensity starting to pick up, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, trying to play travel sports and, and playing most of the year, so it's getting tough. Oh, wow. What sports are you playing? I'm uh, playing basketball, baseball, and soccer. Okay. Which one's your favorite? Baseball. Baseball. Okay. So you're just kind of testing everything out. Yeah. I mean, I haven't found the one that I uh, I, I, I don't want to give up all the other sports for, so I'm still trying to play, play multiple, but I think I'm leaning toward baseball or soccer. Okay. So... What, so you're, you came in because your symptoms are getting worse when you play sports? Yes, is that what it is? Yes. So what symptoms are you experiencing when you're playing? Um, a lot of coughing, um, shortness of breath, um, wheezing, and then my chest starts to feel really tight and like I can't, obviously can't breathe as well. Um, it so has yeah, to be scary. Yeah, it's, it's, um, Definitely doesn't feel good. So Make before you, hard. yeah, I'm sure, and especially if the intensity is picking up. Yes, it, I mean it's obviously starting to get more noticeable now that I'm getting older. Okay. Everybody's starting to you know, get more faster and bigger, and so. All right. Now, is when you're playing sports, is that the only time you're feeling your symptoms? Um. For the most part, sometimes, I mean, if they, every so often when I'm sick, I feel obviously worse. Um, and then if I'm near any smoke or anything in the air that will get in my lungs or that I can breathe in, that, that definitely makes it tougher too. So with asthma, that's actually pretty common. We call them triggers, um, and it's things that can spark up more inflammation and make your symptoms a lot worse, make you cough a lot more and kind of give you that chest tightness. Mm -hmm. So yours sounds like it's exercise, cold and flu, and smoke, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, does anybody in the family smoke? My grandma, but I only see her a few times a year, so that's not too huge of an issue right now. Does she smoke in the house with you? She, yeah, she smokes in and around the house, and it's on her clothes, and that, that bothers me, too. Okay. We can figure out a way to kind of work around those two. Okay. But um, do you take any medications at home? Um, I take Singular. Okay. Um, do you take it by mouth? Yes. Okay. and But that seems to pretty much work for you. Yeah, I mean, any time that... Right, yeah, it, it has seemed to do the job so far okay so I don't necessarily think I'll if that works for you and your family and it's only when you're experiencing exercise I don't think I'll adjust your treatment for your everyday medication to help you with your asthma I think what we'll focus on is how to treat this exercise induced asthma okay. so when we look at asthma um, we look at it as if it is a uh, stoplight. So what we do is you put it into the green, yellow, and red. So here's, uh, I made a kind of a treatment plan for you. So we'll look at it as if we're looking at a stoplight. Okay. So how you measure yourself is called peak flow. So peak flow is it measures from zero to 100 how much air you're able to expel out of your lungs, okay. meaning how much air comes out when you breathe. And you want to be up in that green range, which is 
80 to 100. So what it sounds like is when you're at home, not exercising, you're in this safety zone. But we can give you a peak flow meter to measure at home. So that means you're in the safety. So it means you have no coughing, you're able to sleep through the night, you're um, having no shortness of breath, no chest tightness. And so we'll keep you on your singular and I believe you're on five milligrams. So we'll keep you at five milligrams and you take it every night. And this will keep you in that green safety zone, which is where we want you. Now, what I'll do is I'll then kind of order things for you for the yellow and red, and as well as to help you with your exercise induced asthma. Are you following along with me? I know it's a lot. Yeah, I, I think uh, this is making sense to me. Okay, so then we have the yellow. So the yellow is caution. So it's not, let's hurry up, get you to the emergency room. It's just, you need a little more support than that everyday singular. Okay, yeah. so that's when you're having the shortness of breath, cough, wheeze, chest tightness, and those just icky cold and flu symptoms. And that's when your peak flow, the how much air you expel, is from 50 to 70. So a little bit at halfway. I would put you on albuterol, an inhaler, at 1.25 milligrams. Now, the milligrams you can adjust on the inhaler, and we'll show you how to do that. Okay. Um, but you can take two puffs, so puff, puff, every four hours. Now, the only thing with this is if you have to use these more than two times a week, except when you're exercising, then we need to get you on a new everyday plan so we can keep you in the green. Because if you're using it more than two times a week, we don't want you to stay in that yellow okay. section for too long. Okay. Now, on the further end is the red section. So that's kind of more of the dangerous area. And that's when your peak flow is from zero to 50. Now, we don't want you here. So we're gonna do our best to keep you away from here using the more maintenance medications. However, these are what we call rescue medications. So this is when you're having severe difficulty breathing. It's hard for you to walk. It's hard for you to talk. Um, this is when your other meds, like your Singulair and then that albuterol, isn't helping you. Okay. Okay. Now, this is when you can use 2.5 milligrams of a nebulizer for every 20 minutes. Now, if that doesn't help, then you need to call 911. Um, and we'll get you um, inpatient so we can treat you better here. Now, I don't want to scare you with that, but it's always good to know where you are just in case so you can plan what medications to have. Now, before you exercise, is there anything that you do to kind of prepare to help with your asthma? Um, I just make sure that I'm uh, extra well rested beforehand and that I, uh, I don't do too much of any other type of physical activity beforehand um, to make sure I'm, I'm eating right, drinking a lot of water um, to get myself as um, feeling as well as I can before I begin any sort of sport or any other physical activity. Okay, so it's actually kind of important to get yourself moving before you have severe, before you have extreme exercise. Um, so to kind of help with exercise induced asthma, um, you want to warm up five to 10 minutes before. Now that's not me telling you to go run a mile before you start, but a light jog, maybe, um, a good bit of stretching. This is getting those lungs ready to take in all that air. That way it's not such a shock to the system. And right now we're in October and it's starting to get colder. Do you feel more symptoms when you're cold? Yes, when my uh, 
Yeah, so when the weather is colder, uh, I notice um, it affects me a lot faster. Um, the sh I have practices early in the morning, so that uh, that early morning sharp air um, feels like needles in my chest and, and makes me tighten up a lot quicker than, uh, than when it's hot outside. Um, so, yeah, I've definitely started to notice that more now that we're um, – it's fall – as opposed to summer. Okay. A good trick is to wrap a scarf or find a way to, I don't know if they make like the face masks, but you could probably wear a scarf to kind of prevent that cold air from striking right away. Um, another good tip is since you're trying to figure out what sport you're really into, you could think of, um, and you're debating on which ones to pick, it's important to think of which ones are more high endurance. So because you are an asthmatic, you want to think of a lower endurance sport because this is the ones that you are, like soccer for instance. Soccer you are exerting so much force to expel all that air and that could trigger your asthma. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned baseball. Baseball is a great sport for asthmatics because it's not as high of an endurance sport, but yet you still get to be a part of the team and have that sport experience. Cause I don't want to take that away from you, but um, maybe staying away from the soccer or basketball. Swimming is also another good option, but even depending on what type of swimming you do, it can be considered high endurance, but baseball is a great option that I think maybe you should consider. Maybe picking that as your sport if you truly enjoy it. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely um, really like baseball and that. And of the three sports, now that you mention it, that's definitely the one where I experience the least um, the least symptoms. Um, it's usually played in the in the, the warmer months, anyway, so that that helps also, um, as opposed to soccer or basketball being in a in the fall or the early spring when it's it's still cold outside. Um, so I, I, I think that's really good advice. I think that, um, I mean, I, I love baseball. It's not, it's not like I would, um, I would feel bad um, leaving the other sports behind because I do, I do enjoy playing baseball and it definitely, I definitely feel better at the end of a practice or a game than I do um, running on the soccer field or up and down the basketball court. Okay, that's good then. Um, something to consider that I'm going to kind of tell you to do is I want you to take your albuterol inhaler, um, the 1.25 milligrams, okay. and I want you to do one to two inhales um, five to 20 minutes before your exercise okay. or your sport um, or anything that's really going to exert you because that will take that initial um shock to the system out and this way um you'll be able to breathe more comfortably and um not have as much chest tightness that uh that makes a lot of sense sounds um, like a good plan i think that's a i think that's a good place to start and i think that uh i hopefully think that between um the inhaler and um maybe not playing as many sports and just sticking to a, like you said, a lower endurance uh, sport. I think those should help the uh, help the issue a little bit and hopefully allow me to enjoy the experience more and be able to hopefully play competitively uh, through middle school and high school. Okay. I also want you to take this um, green light system with you. Um, that way it gives you more of a way to track yourself and kind of see where okay. you are. Um, I want so we're going to continue on the singular. You're going to use the albuterol for the um, maintenance just in case you need something else. And then the albuterol nebulizer for the rescue. Okay. Um, and then I am going to also on your... Uh, sheet to go home. There are many other medications to treat as a rescue, maintenance, 
So if these aren't working for you, I want you to come back and we can reassess. So I do want you to come for a follow-up appointment. Okay. I'll, um, I'll definitely uh, let my parents know. And um, I, I really appreciate all the advice. I hope this helps. Good, and I hope it works for you. And good luck with those sports teams. Thank you.